and that's the thing like it's rare that i'll get hate from someone my age but you best believe i'll get a message from from a 60 year old woman saying oh. how dare you portray yourself in that way on tv like your parents will sure be proud like yeah they're they're ruthless those older people like god karen like it's your bedtime please <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to It's Time to Go, a Big Brother Australia podcast. My name is Jaden Shepherd. For two points, I'm nominating my co-host, Ben Myers. And for one point, I'm nominating today's guest. Welcome to the podcast, Sarah. One point? What the hell? How dare you? <laughs> no, that's Look. better. You don't want two points? And that's a good point. That's a good point. I mean, at least I, I'm still in the Big Brother house. <laughs> yeah, I get one point every week and it feels absolutely horrible. I get yeah, at least no, one point Yeah, I know, it's kind of like heart-wrenching, isn't it? Like... It, doesn't, it doesn't feel good. Jaden never gets nominated. So, uh, yeah, well, I should I switch say... it up. I should I should start doing the intro, actually, just so I can nominate you. Um, We should we can take our masks <laughs> off, by the way. I'm just, I just, we, we had the masks on because we're all, uh, we're all in Melbourne. We're Stage all locked, four lockdown. We're all locked it's Stage four, it's, it's, intense. A, <laughs> it's a state of disaster. <laughs> Apparently, big man Dan, he's... You know, he's put his foot down. He says it's enough's enough, and now we're in timeout. So, what can we do? Uh, you're pretty no, used to it. You spent 38 days in the Big Brother house, and now you're just <laughs> spending all your time in your own house. I know. See, that's the thing. Like, I, I'm, I feel like this is kind of like a holiday for me. You know, I got <laughs> internet, I got my phone, I get to play board games and have a deck of cards. Like, we got none of this in the house. So, I was, I was gonna say, I, I was gonna say, what was like worse, the peak of your boredom in the house or the peak of boredom now because you do have more things that you can do you do have more things to keep you entertained now yeah oh the peak of boredom in the house 100 percent. because like when you're bored in the house there's literally nothing to do like on what day 20 onwards we've already talked about every single topic under the sun so when we're bored we'll literally just sit in the lounge room all together and just stare into abyss like there, there's nothing to talk about so we'll just daydream all together i will be completely silent and that's just us being bored. Like I, w I would always like parkour on the couches and I'll try to like climb <laughs> up cool. the walls. And that's what I would do when I was bored. And, but big brother would always give me a punishment. So I'll tell you off for that. Oh, man. Yeah. Always like, apparently I can't climb. Like how do you big brother? <laughs> he, could, he could at least set you up like some sort of obstacle course or I something. Know. Come on. Give me some monkey bars, please. Like, <laughs> All of a sudden, um, the next challenge in like the the bunker is um like parkour. Who can do the best parkour? Dude, every mm. single morning to reach the cereal on my top shelf, I need to do parkour. When you're four feet tall, like <laughs> you need to learn this stuff from a young age. Like it's it's serious. <laughs> Going back to being bored, the thing is, at the moment, even though we're not doing anything we have the news cycle to talk about. Like we can talk about Dan, and we can talk about what's happening yeah. with COVID. Um, but then after you've sort of like discussed, like I see my friend Tom, like every few days and we sort of discuss what's happened since mm. the last time we caught up. But then after like half an hour, it's just like, all right, what else? We've done nothing. What else what can else? we talk about? Yeah. Cause we, we can do nothing. So there's nothing to talk about. Yeah. Whereas in the, it's not like yeah. we've done anything different with our lives. Like, <laughs> yeah. It, whereas in the big brother house, you wouldn't have even had that to run off. Like you wouldn't have even True. had that day, that daily news. So there's even yeah. less. Normally we'll like after a nomination, like the next morning, I'll just be sitting there with my coffee and it'll be like dead silent. It'll be so awkward. And I'll be like, mm, so like mm. that was rough last night. Zoe, am I right? <laughs> <laughs> and people just stare at me and I'm just, I'm just trying to lighten the mood. Like, yeah. please. <laughs> There is nothing worse than that, though, trying to start a really dry conversation yeah. and no one else is vibing it. And it's like, you don't know. Once you're in that swing of things aren't picking up, it just gets harder and harder. It's, it's so like the, hard. the, hard, the harder you try, the yeah. further you dig the hole. Like. <laughs> and especially because I feel like I was the little sister of the house. So I was always trying to start up those, you know, conversations oh. and be, you know, real positive and like, yeah, today's going to be a good day. But everyone was just so like... You know, everyone just wasn't feeling it. It's not a good day. It really yeah, isn't a good day. No, it's never a good day. <laughs> I mean, you guys were having people evicted every two to three days. So that awkward moment at the breakfast must have happened a lot. Oh, a lot. And I take the piss out of everything. I never take anything seriously. So mm. like, even after an eviction, I'll like try to make some like lighthearted jokes 
tips and people will not take it. So I'm just sitting there like, oh, like, please don't evict me next. Like, yeah. But yeah, it was it, so many awkward moments because like, especially straight after an eviction, we'll go into the lounge room and we will kind of say some words about the person saying like, wow, they're a great person. Yeah. Like they can do so well. And then after that, it's just silent and it's just awkward. Mm-hmm. And we're like, oh, well, good for us for staying in the house, but bad luck to that person doing their exit interview outside. Like it's, it's so awkward. <laughs> it is awkward. And especially as well, it's like, you're not going to see them again for another like X amount of days. Yeah. So it's like you've gone from living with someone to being like, oh, we don't know them anymore. Literally, yeah, because after we leave the house, we literally don't get to see anyone. You you spend maybe a couple days in a hotel doing some interviews and stuff, and then they send you on the first flight back home. So what is it like like Hannah and even Sophie and Chad and all that? After I got evicted, the first time I saw them was when I flew up to Sydney for the finale. So, like, it's crazy. You, like, for example, like, Sophie and I in the house, we were literally best friends. Like, she's one of the closest people in my life at the moment. And um, you went from living with each other and knowing like everything about them to all of a sudden never seeing them for months on end. Like it's, yeah, it's, and we weren't allowed to like add each other on Facebook or oh. Instagram or nothing like that. So That's yeah, awkward. it's hard. Yeah. <laughs> when did the show, when did the show finish filming? Uh, April. April. And then it didn't start airing till like June. So there was like two months there that you had to send a wait until you could kind of be friends again yeah like we would try to like reach out to each other on like instagram you know like just message them without following them or anything and try to get their phone numbers so Mm -hmm. like you know there was a lot of phone calls so but you know there's only so many phone calls you can do before the conversation of big brother gets boring you know so yeah yeah it was it was hard but yeah (laughs) no that's cool um you mentioned something before i want to pick up on you mentioned how you were like the little sister of the house yeah I think that worked to your advantage in terms of like you weren't nominated till the very end of the game do you think no one wanted to nominate their little sister a hundred percent I knew going into the house because I I already knew I was the youngest in all of my group auditions and stuff the next person that was like closest to my age was probably like 23 24 Mm -hmm. so I knew okay if I get onto the show I'm definitely the youngest because the producers even told me in one of my interviews they said normally we won't want anyone under the age of 21 on reality tv just because we're all idiots which is which is fair but I I had to try and you know turn my age being a negative into kind of like a positive so I really wanted going into that house. I really wanted to be that innocent, sweet little sister that everyone felt the need to protect. That's why I was, you know, like highly emotional and I was friends with everyone. And I really wanted to make those emotional connections. And I feel like it worked to my advantage. Cause as you said, like towards the end, no one, you know, no one wanted to send home their little sister. And even when I did get evicted, the people that voted for me, like you could tell that they were sad. Yeah. you know which is which is cool i reckon my strategy worked like it's great <laughs> even though that's sort of like it's you being you it is like maybe somewhat a strategy still it didn't sort of seem like you were playing a game until it got till the very end or what we saw on the show where it was sort mm-hmm. of like you it was you were the deciding vote of who was going to go home and it was like you were the flip vote and everyone was trying to win you over and that was sort of the first time we saw you going to the diary room and being like oh shit like i actually have like a bit of power now randomly yeah, <laughs> randomly. yeah like I don't know. See, watching back, I reckon, you know, like the editing and the um, portrayal of the show, I reckon it did a pretty good job, but it was kind of disheartening because I was, I was very much a strategist. Like I went into that house playing a strategy. I didn't tell a single person what I was truly thinking. Even Sophie, you know, she was my closest friend in the house. I didn't, I never told her my strategy. I never told her what I was truly thinking. And that was from day one. You know, I was always playing that social game, but Mm -hmm. As you guys said, like you guys didn't see it, which is a bit disheartening because in the house, you know, I was constantly getting headaches every single day from thinking about everything. And then for it to be shown that I'm kind of just floating, it's, Mm. it's sucky. But I mean, I'm glad that towards the end, I did get that opportunity to show that, you know, I did actually think about the game. Unless people actually very clearly spell it out that, hey, this is my game plan. Like, yeah. that is what's only, that's only when they're going to show it. That's only when they're really able to show it on the show. Um, yeah. Like, for example, Alan uh, is like the, the main one, I guess, that was just screaming 
from the start and yes. look how, and look how that worked out for him, even though it may have not come through. And I think Sarah, I'm mean, sorry, uh, Sophie said the same thing to us in the DMs that she just that hey guys, just because it doesn't come through that I have a strategy doesn't mean that I don't have a strategy. I do have yes. a strategy, even though you're not seeing it. Hundred percent. Like I feel like there was only a certain few people that went into the house without a strategy and was kind of just rolling with the punches, but. Like someone like me, if I have a one in 20 chance of $250,000, you best believe I have a foolproof plan. Like, I feel like that's an opportunity that you can't pass up. But mm. yeah, Sophie is right. Like, is even someone like Sophie as well. Like she was, she was shown as just this loved up woman, but in the house, she, she definitely had more strategy around that. Mm. But yeah, it's whatever. <laughs> um, you and mentioned... Oh, no, you go, Ben. You go. <laughs> I, 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 I was just going to say, like, what's... You were saying sort of like, I didn't even tell Sophie about my strategy. It's like, you can be friends with someone. Like, what, what's the point? You don't have to. Like, and you can be friends with someone on a reality TV show and you don't have to... Like, it's not like that's being dishonest to them that you're not just like being like, hey, we're friends, but I'm not going to tell you my strategy. Like, it's not like it's disloyal yeah. or anything well yeah like that's how I think of it it's just like I never told anyone like I'm not telling you my strategy I was just very much I played dumb a lot of the time <laughs> so every single time Sophie or even like Casey or Dan or whatever would be like oh what are you thinking I would be like oh I don't know what I'm thinking this is really hard for me I don't know what I'm gonna do but little do they know like I, I already <laughs> knew who I was gonna nominate a week ago like <laughs> yeah. yeah it's so I didn't exactly lie but even to Sophie when she was talking to me about her strategy i'll be like wow like that's so smart i wouldn't have even thought of that oh, but you know it, <laughs> but it's hard because at the end of the day like there's so much on the line and i didn't want to trust anyone you yeah. know my i trusted sophie with my emotions and with how i felt and she was more of an emotional connection for me and i feel like you need that in the house but in a strategical sense and by playing the game i didn't trust anyone no one at all so yeah <laughs> it doesn't mean that shitty people it just means everyone's trying to get that everyone's just trying to get that 250 grand yeah like, i just want the coin <laughs> like, you were sorry. there to win no hard feelings <laughs> no that's fair enough um no you mentioned how like you became like really close with everyone but you had the disadvantage of coming in on day four how did you start to like i don't know assimilate yourself into the house with that kind of massive disadvantage I was so scared when we were told, because we were told um, that we were, you know, late comers mm -hmm. when we were at the door. When Sonia told us like, oh, they've already been in the house for a couple of days. Yeah. That's our reaction to finding out that we weren't there on night one. And it was very disheartening because I told the like producers and all through my auditions, I said, the one thing that I don't want to be is an intruder or a latecomer. Because look at me, like they'll eat me up and spit me out alive. I was yeah. crapping myself. But um, I just really wanted to make sure that I, you know, I, I didn't want to seem as though I was a threat. I wanted to make friendships with everyone because, you know, the last thing you want to do is nominate your friend. So I wanted mm -hmm. to have those relationships with everyone. But especially in the beginning when there was, what, like 20 people in the house, I, it was really hard for me. I, if I'm being honest, I didn't really enjoy my first week in the house just because there were so many big personalities and yeah. I was so quiet. I thought to myself, what have I done? I'm not even enjoying myself. Like I couldn't even get a word in to some of these conversations. And I just felt like, you know, I just didn't feel like I gelled well with a lot of those bigger personalities, but yeah. um, you know, it took, it probably took about, yeah, like probably like four or five days for me to actually feel comfortable and me to get to know these people on more of an emotional level. And I was just super lucky that I wasn't nominated within those first couple of days of me in the house because I would have been so vulnerable. I would have not known how I would have reacted at all. So I'm glad people kind of gave me that chance to make those bonds because yeah. else I would have gone up. Yeah. And well, to be fair, like if it wasn't for Garth winning the second competition, I feel like the house was going to nominate one of you newcomers a hundred percent yeah like we knew going into that challenge that one of us had to win had to like being being a latecomer and even you know like hannah and sabong experienced it when they arrived late it's it and um, it's unfortunate as, as it is but when you're a latecomer you're so vulnerable and you're the easiest person to put up yeah. because nominating people is quite mentally strenuous you know it takes a toll on your morals in a way so 
you know, you kind of want the easy way out, which is to nominate people that you aren't really close with, especially in the beginning when it was more of a social game. Yeah, that's fair enough. Talking about watching the show, did you watch the original Australian Big Brother? Ooh. Yes, I was obsessed with it. I I wasn't allowed to watch before, like, maybe 2010, like, those earlier seasons. Yeah. But mind okay. you, like, Ben Norris's season where he won in 2012, like, I was literally 11 or 12 years old. So Shit, those last yeah. seasons, I watched it and I loved it. I'm actually re-watching them now. I piss myself laughing. <laughs> they're good. They're good seasons. They're, they yeah. are good seasons. And it was like, it was again, different from the original seasons that we grew up on it with. Yeah. Um, but I look back at it now and I'm like, yeah, they were good seasons. Totally. They were good seasons. Yeah. Much more PG. <laughs> <laughs> oh no. Have you been, have you seen some of the uncut stuff from the earlier seasons? Yeah. As well? I've watched bits and pieces and it's intense. Like, Oh, it's full on. It's full oh on. <laughs> yeah. See, my mum was actually scared of me going on Big Brother because she remembers it from the early seasons. Yeah. And she said to me, she's like, did you really think about this? Have you spoken to Nathan, which is my boyfriend? She's yeah. like, how dare you do this to him? And I'm like, no, like, it's not like that anymore. It's a game. Yeah. Like, I'm there to win money, mum. I'm not there to do anything else. <laughs> because back then, it was like around the 2005, 2006 era, it was like a lot of the girls would go in, come out, and they would be like swimwear models and in like men's magazines and stuff like that. Yeah. And it's like very not, yeah, not very much not that anymore. Oh, well, I mean, Sophie and uh, some of the other people are going on to do like, I guess, more of the influencer thing influencer. now, but it's, de it's definitely not. Yeah. yeah, but like it's, I feel like back then it was definitely... Like, it was more of, like, kind of, like, a Love Island type yeah. feel to it. You know, people went in there, like, they, they purposely put singles in the house for a reason. When this time yeah. around, majority of us were actually in, like, full-blown relationships. So, I mean, yeah. <laughs> um, no, I want to pick your brain a bit. Like, first of all, like, you, so you knew with the audition process that it was going to be a game this time. Like, it would be strategy, right? Yeah. Um, and then, like, before you went into the house, because it seems like you had a clear understanding of what you wanted to do, did you watch, like, other shows to, like, get, like, an idea of what you wanted to do? Or was it just, like, I just need to be friends with everyone and fly under the radar? Yeah, so during during the audition process, we did know that it was pre-filmed. We did know that it was much about the game. Think right. about a strategy. Like, in the questionnaire, it said, what would your strategy be? Okay. And that's when I knew, I was like, okay, maybe it's giving me more survivor feels. And yeah. after the first couple of phone calls, they put a lot of emphasis on what's your strategy? How are you going to win? Yeah. And that's when it hit me saying like, okay, I've actually got to come up with a foolproof strategy. And I didn't tell any of the housemates, but I actually did a lot of research. I watched Big Brother US. I watched Big Brother Canada. Yeah. So like I, I actually, you know, I watched Survivor. I watched mm -hmm. all of those TV shows that replicate this new season. But in the house, Alan actually said um, quite early on, he's like, oh yeah, I, I love Big Brother US. I love Big Brother Canada. I love, you know, like, yeah. and he knew all the past season winners of every single Big Brother Australia. And that's when people caught on saying, okay, he's done his research. Yeah. So when I saw that it backfired on Alan, I didn't tell a single person that I did my research. Of course not. Don't yeah. tell them at all. When they told me like, oh, have you watched Survivor? I'm like, no, like, it's not really my thing. Like, nah, I watch YouTube. <laughs> like, I downplayed it so much. But yeah, I, I definitely did some research and I saw what worked for other people in the US, which, you know, I, I don't know if I recommend it though, because the US version is very much more cutthroat. It is, I went yes. into the house expecting for people to come up to me and say, oh, you're gone. You're, you know, like how they do in the US version. So I got, you know, pretty much slapped in the face on my first day in the house when I realized it was a social game. But well, the closest thing we got to that was you and Jaden. Is it Marissa? It's Marissa. It's Marissa. <laughs> Can we sing it? We're not singing it. Marissa. Marissa. We, we, love, we love Marissa. We always oh, sing God. Marissa. We always sing Marissa's name. We we love her name. Maybe maybe just her name. I don't know why. It just flows nicely. It just, <laughs> yeah. it's, just it's just easy to sing for some we reason. We even did auto tune one time. Oh uh, yeah, we got out. We I paid for an auto tune app so we can. We had a Marissa song. We need to get that to her. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> get back on track. I'll buy it. <laughs> you'll buy it yeah, yeah sure we'll get you on the on the like the remix the featuring song. Um, yeah yeah 
<laughs> um, how was that? How was that? That was an intense fucking moment. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, it was very intense, especially what well, I'd been in the house for a couple days at that point. And I knew coming out of the, you know, putting people up for nomination because I, I nominated people with Talia. I knew that that could potentially put a target on my back because there was already talks in the house of a target being on Talia's back because she was winning challenges. Mm -hmm. So coming out of the diary room, knowing that I'd put people up for eviction, I actually walked out there thinking in my mind, I'm like, okay, you've got to cry. You've got to cry. You've got to cry to make people think that I was really upset about the whole situation. And then once I start crying, you know, I'm a teenage girl. I just can't stop. So then after the nomination happened, I went into, you know, the pink room and then, you know, the, the famous like Sarah, Sarah, have a word, boys. <laughs> like I heard that. And that's good. You know, seeing Marissa like walk up to me, I yeah, I did get scared just because it's intimidating, you know. I thought she was I thought then and there she would, you know, she would pin a target on my back. So I was I was mainly scared and you know, of course I cried. I'm a bit emotional, but yeah, I just kept on crying even more. <laughs> <laughs> to make it even worse, I mean, she didn't know this, but I'm pretty sure when you guys were in the dining room, it was like Subong, Hannah, and it was like Marissa was like the last choice. Yeah. And it's yeah. Like, she was just thrown in there, but she like blew it out of proportion. A hundred percent. I think that was, that was her first evic like nomination. So yeah, she definitely did take it personal, which I was surprised also going into the house, how personal people make it. Because, you know, like, yeah. if you guys watch Big Brother US and Big Brother Canada, like, it's very much you take emotions out of it. And even, like, Survivor, you know, it's very much strategy-based. So when I saw people took it so, like, emotionally and took it very much to heart, I, I was shocked. I'm like, dude, like, this isn't a personal attack on you. Like, it's just, the it's me trying to stay in the game for a couple more days. But, Yeah. Do you think Sophie took everything as personally with Dan and Matt as she made it out to be? Or do you think she was just playing up how devastated she was by that to um, get sort of viewers of the show on her side? Um, no, when you're, when you're in the house, we didn't actually think about the viewers. We didn't think about gotcha. how we were going to be portrayed because we all thought we were going to be portrayed completely different than how we actually were. Gotcha. So... But I feel like Sophie is such a determined person and she was so determined to win this game, you know, like even looking at her background, like she's so competitive and good on her for it. So then when Dan and Matt promised her like, yeah, we'll be in the final four and then they didn't, I think she definitely took it personally just because she put trust in them and when you're that late in the game when you're so close to the end trust is everything like every minor thing that happens that late in the game honestly blows up because we're all exhausted yeah. we're all emotionally wrecked like we just want to go home and yeah so i i definitely think she took it personally um you know would have i taken it that personally i don't think so but then again i feel like she was on a completely different you know freeway to me in the game you know the she the yeah. game meant so much to her yeah. like she yeah it was her next like they drilled it in really hard on the show it was her <laughs> alternative yeah, to the olympics the olympics it was her olympics gold like, medal yeah, gold yeah. Medal. speaking of speaking of gold medals uh chad yeah he won yes <laughs> and, what, and, and um were you who were you expecting for the final three to win yeah um playing the game i when I left the house and I found out who the final three were, I'm like, 100% Dan's going to win. Sure. Um, all of us in the house, we knew Dan was going to be the fan favourite. We knew it because in the house, he was the most funny person ever. He made us all laugh all day, every day. He was like, you know, a 2020 Fitzy, you know. We knew yeah. he was going to be a fan favourite. But then, obviously, with how the show played out, and maybe it's because I didn't have as many strat chats with him. Maybe I didn't see that side of him. But, you know, he di definitely didn't cop the fan favourite award. So, um, watching the show, I did ex kind of expect Chad to win. I feel like he, you know, played that noble game that Australia is yeah. definitely looking for. Because this time round... Australia is not watching it thinking about the game. They're watching it thinking of it as a social experiment, like what the old big brothers were. So um, I feel like everyone in Australia was definitely looking for that, 
you know, that humble, like great guy, you know, so watching it, I did expect Chad to win in, in a way. <laughs> Hearing you um, say that, like, makes me disappointed for Dan, because I really think that you guys played a game together, was, which was based off strategy. And it's like, why are we letting Australia decide it should have been like the final seven people would be like locked away in a hotel room like they do in the US. Yeah. And you guys who were voted out should be really deciding. Um, like, I'll admit, I was the Dan's biggest fan during the game, but he did play the best uh, social and strategic game as that I, I believe that I saw on TV. And it makes yeah. me sad because I think that like he deserved the win based off the strategic game. And that's the thing, like, in my opinion, I feel like the person who wins should have had to play the hardest game. But then again, mm. I'm in the kind of survivor mentality because that's yeah. how it plays out in Survivor. You know, it's the same with, like, you know, um, all the Survivor winners, they've had to play that hard strategical game. Yeah. But Australia's not seeing this as a game yet. They're still, you know, they're still stuck into the old big brother. They're just wanting the nice guy to win. They're wanting the funny guy to win. They're wanting the noble game to win. Mm. But I think as years go on with this new format and even, like, next year coming up, I think... Um, Australia is definitely going to see this game as more of more of a strategical, you know, game. Yeah, no, I, I agree with you. I think you guys are like the guinea pigs and next year people will understand it way more. A hundred percent. Next year, there's going to be so much more strategy involved because we went into this game like not knowing the hell we were doing. We watched all, the old Big Brother, so we were bait. Even in the house, you guys would have saw we were still basing it off social, you know, interactions. We yeah. were putting people up for nomination because you know, we weren't friends with them or they weren't in our alliance. But I feel like going into next year, we're going to very much see, you know, blind sides and we're going to see yeah. friends go, go against friends because people are seeing our strategies and they're wanting to improve it. Yeah, so, true. Yeah. Um, you mentioned blind side. There was only really one big blind side of the season, which you were kind of like kind of involved with, but like not in a purposeful way. You won your second comp with Zoe. And you guys nominated, it was like Kieran, Marissa and Ian mm. with Kieran being the target and through this whole twist of the bunker and Garth going in, that was really the only kind of blind side of the season where there was like jaws dropping um, in the nomination room. And like, how was that in the house? Like the tense feeling after Ian left? It, it was crazy. Those couple weeks were actually really intense because I had no clue that Ian was going home. After I put up my nominations i told people like yep i've you know i've served up my cheese platter you guys can decide amongst yourselves like i didn't really want any part in it but i did not for one minute think that ian was going to go home but i'm actually surprised you said that because there were actually much more blind sides in the house okay. than what was shown like even during garth's eviction because after ian got sent home which was you know because of garth mm -hmm. I was actually in Garth's alliance. It was me, Chad, Sophie, and Garth. We were like in a oh. very tight alliance. Okay. And after Ian's eviction, and I found out that it was Garth's fault, I actually went to Dan and Xavier. We plotted a plan to go against Garth. And I and that was all because of me. I literally did an entire blindside to Garth and we turned the entire house against Garth without him knowing. He was completely blindsided. Like the entire house voted for him and he was so surprised. And that was all because of me, but no yeah. one knew that. Like, it's like, I want to see that. Why that's that huge. Know. <laughs> that's a big like, deal. I know. And I was so proud of myself because that was hard for me because I knew that if I didn't get Garth out, he would have then, you know, he would have chucked the target back on my back, you know, like mm -hmm. it's, it's hard. If you don't shoot, you then get shot back. So that was a real big yeah. risk in my game. And I did it and I didn't even get shown. Like I'm a hey. mastermind, I swear. <laughs> hey, Jaden. Yeah. You know what that was? What was that? We just got a scoop on our oh, show. We, we just yeah. got a scoop on our show. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> That's our first oh, scoop. Sorry, God. Sorry, God. It was all because of the game. Because he was he was one of the biggest social threats that went into that house by far. He was friends with everyone. Yeah. And after he sent Ian home, I then knew how much power he had in this game. Mm. And I thought, I can't beat him if he has such big social ties. Because I was also playing a social game. I had to take out those social competitors. So... Yeah, that was my blind side of the season that no one even knew about. So. <laughs> I'm so, gl go. so glad we know now. So glad we know. <laughs> no, but that was around the point of the game where a lot of like big targets were going out because they kind of were 
sticking their neck out, if that makes sense. Yeah, like very much at that point in the game when there was still a lot of people, you had to keep a low profile. All the, you know, the big personalities, they were all sent home first because, you know, people were intimidated by them. That's why I very much kept a low profile in the first, like, 25 days. <laughs> no, that's, like, so fair. Um, you mentioned that alliance there. Were you in any other alliances that we don't know of? Um, I mean, I, I also met Dan at my group audition. Mm -hmm. So I had a very much a soft spot for him. He was like that little piece of home for me. Yep. So I was actually also in a secret alliance with Dan because Dan mm -hmm. was obviously in the alpha group. And then at the end of every eviction or before an eviction, I would actually pull him aside and we would talk to each other about what was going on on each side of the fence. So Perfect. I think I was the mole of the pink room, but <laughs> I, feel like I was just doing what I was doing to stay alive. So yeah, I, I, I just tried to fixate myself in every alliance, if that made sense. Like I was very much a floater, um, but yeah, I feel like I was in an alliance with everyone. <laughs> Speaking of um, deserving winners, and I know Jaden hates the word deserve, but we are, we were, we, were, we were talking about our Chad and who would deserve to win this season as opposed to like an old older season of Big Brother, depending on the, how the strategy has changed and how the format of the show has changed. How's this as a deserving winner? Hear me out. Sarah McDougall. Mm. <laughs> what, 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 do you, what do you think? Because it was sort of like, all just like going off the online culture and the fan forums on Facebook that we were in and things like that. And I hate to be like, I hate to sound like, oh, you were so close, but you didn't yeah. get there. You were close. But, but it was like, it got to that final four and it was like the polls, oh, the gosh. online polls were all like, oh, the final five. And it was like those online, yeah, the polls were all like really swinging your way, like by a landslide. And then you got evicted and then it was just sort of all like, yeah, sort of went to start going towards Chad and it was like, uh, and that's when everyone sort of uh, online sort of started to be like, that's it. We're done with this show. This sucks. <laughs> yeah. I actually, um, what is it? And I mentioned this in another interview as well. I was very surprised about all that just because in the house, you could tell that I very much wasn't a favorite. I think the producers mm. were very surprised at the fact that people actually liked me because in the house, you know, I didn't get secret challenges. I didn't get, you know, like any special treatment. I, you know, I got none of that. So then when I actually started to get a bit of a following and when people, you know, cause my, my boyfriend is in all those forums as well, those big brother fan pages and stuff. And when they were doing polls in the final five, it was like, Oh, who do you think should win? Or who do you think is going to win? And it was like 80% was me. And then it's the huge. rest was like, yeah, it was, it was crazy. And I think even the producers were really surprised by that as well, because when, as you said, like when I got evicted, people went nuts even on twitter and stuff mm -hmm. I, I was so surprised but you know i i literally walk down my street now and people scream out in like my main street saying like you were robbed so I get <laughs> were robbed. Of it on a daily basis <laughs> no, <laughs> did that, did that devastate you seeing with the way the polls were going knowing that uh i'm gonna be evicted like <laughs> a bit, yeah yeah it, it did a bit just because like you know, I thought to myself, oh, if I was a bit more fit, like Sophie and Dan, then I could have won that corn challenge. Because I feel like uh, I left that was I lost that challenge. Yeah. yeah everyone, but... everyone in my house that was watching that was fuming, just like going, <laughs> how, how, how is this a thing? Win that? How, how and why have they done this to Sarah? <laughs> and like the twist and like, I get that Big Brother has twists, but like, yeah. I remember on Twitter, like a couple of episodes before, like maybe it was like final seven, a lot of people were like, holy moly, if there is the two pairs and Sarah at the final five, th there's no way she's going home because the pairs will target each other by that stage. So if it wasn't for this twist, you probably wouldn't have ever been nominated. Like if Chad won, he would have put the boys up. If Dan won, he would have put the couple up. You would have went through to the final four and who knows what would have happened from there. But I guess Big Brother twists happen all the time. Exactly. And I feel like also when Sophie came back into the house, I was actually pretty happy because I felt as though when I got to the final four, where it was Chad, Dan, myself and, Ch uh, sorry, Chad, Dan, myself and Matt. Yeah. I thought, okay, Dan and Matt could potentially target me because they're pretty close with Chad. So then when Sophie came back in, I'm like, oh my God, this is great because Chad and Sophie were that furious with Dan and Matt. They wanted mm. to target them and it was the same as vice versa. 
So Dan and Matt, I was like the little, you know, the mediator in the middle. So yep. Dan and Matt would come to me and rant about Chad and Sophie and Chad and Sophie would come to me and rant about Dan and Matt. And I'm on both sides saying like, yeah, that's ridiculous. We need to send them home. Like us three for the final three. Yeah. And then I'll go to the other side and I'm like, yeah, us three for the final three. <laughs> so that, that I, was like, like, I was in such a good position and then I lost. So I mean, that, that was like the whole framing of the final week in the ads on channel seven. It was the bromance versus the showmance, but there's one little thing that's getting in their way. <laughs> yeah. I love that. <laughs> <laughs> that was so funny though. But I mean, like, then again, it's, it was also good for production and stuff to have a romance and romance in the final four like i think that's totally. perfect yeah. so i mean romance, romance, it's yeah. yeah like it's it's great but you know i i do think about it a lot thinking like ah oh, if i just ran faster with those corn <laughs> trains, if i you know worked out every day maybe i could have two hundred and fifty thousand uh, dollars. that's why i hate the idea of going on any game show just knowing that like if i was on the chase like if i was on the chase or something and i got down to the, those final few questions and then i just missed it by like a f uh, i'm like ah, oh, my life would have i was this yeah. this close close to being like my life being different like which is you could do forever but like yeah it is a game and like life's gonna be fine life's gonna go on exactly. <laughs> and, That's and everything and you're gonna keep making coin at bunnings yes hell yeah like <laughs> see that's the thing like i'm i very much went into the game with no hard feelings you know i tried yeah. to take my emotions out of the game um and i just played it day by day so losing at the time i was like okay yeah whatever like that that's okay. I'm on to the next thing. But watching it back was pretty hard. <laughs> I'm like, Sarah, just keep on running. Keep on running, Sarah. Like, you're okay. <laughs> but but yeah. I mean you all looked so sweaty. Like even Dan, like a former athlete, like he looked so sweaty. Yeah. Because yeah. probably about 20 minutes in, not even 20 minutes, about 15 minutes into that challenge. I knew I was a goner. Oh my God. Like I'm up against professional athletes here. And I told myself, I was so angry. I was like swearing to myself. I'm like, fuck this shit. Like this is so yeah. fucking stupid. And I was so angry that I'm like, you know what, Sarah, just keep on running because I want these people to hurt tomorrow. Yeah. Uh, whatever tomorrow's challenge is, I want them to be in pain. <laughs> so I just kept on running and I ended up running for like 50, 50, 55 minutes or something. I just kept on going just to screw these guys over. So, and the next day they were all in so much pain. Yeah. I was, I was loving life. And then I got evicted. So <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you did go for a while considering, but I was still watching it going like, why haven't they compromised and given her like a step ladder or something? <laughs> I know. See, that's the thing. Like Dan could literally run up those steps. Like my God, two, two steps. steps. I had to like, Oh my God. <laughs> that, was really? a, that was a hard challenge. Cause I mean, it really was like ridiculous that a few episodes, it was only like a few episodes earlier. We were seeing like a back to back diary room comparison of you being literally half Dan's yeah. height. And then a few episodes <laughs> later, we're like, yeah, Hey, the challenge is you have to run up the same set of stairs. I wonder who's going to win. Like, yeah. <laughs> and that's the thing like Dan and Matt are both footy players you know Matt plays footy religiously mm. Chad's a PT and Sophie is an excellent gymnast like I was mm. oh my god like I, I'm glad that I gave it a crack though honestly oh you did totally. absolutely and you <laughs> and you did win you nonetheless did like win other challenges in the house like yeah. um what were some of the more like what were some of the more hellacious ones as far as it went for or time because there were some challenges for example the one where you were holding like the bucket of yeah. water for like they went for like six seven hours and i was like holy shit what is going on what were some of like the more hellacious challenges like in time frames that you like that you remember in that well i remember definitely the drip challenge i was one of the first to drop with that yeah yeah i couldn't even barely reach that but anyway we won't get into that <laughs> <laughs> and so we were all literally sitting on the couch watching them with our cup of coffees as they're holding the drip in the pouring rain and it was freezing that day um there was that one also the wind chimes as well i reckon i, I was up there for over an hour and my feet were killing me i don't understand how angie was there for like three and a half hours i think it was it was yeah. oh my god and even um there was a challenge that sophie won where we hold our feet on like this cylinder and it and yes, yes 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 sophie and i were the last true and we were there for i think it was like an hour 40 an hour God damn as well. yeah. but but i like i was fine honestly i was happy for her to take out that win because i just didn't want to target on my back because i already won two challenges so yeah. but i reckon that was one of my favorite challenges because i wasn't even in pain like i don't 
And Dan was like struggling so much. Yeah. He was like shaking. And I'm like, Dan, you can do this. Like, it's fine. <laughs> but, <laughs> so um, those, yeah. Things like that where you have to like hold your arms in a certain position, that kills me as well. Like if I'm typing like on my computer and I'm holding my arms like this, that kills me <laughs> after like 10 minutes. Oh, wow. See, if I'm in a single position, I can hold it forever. Like I, I once, what is All it? Right. Like I can plank for over 15 minutes. I'm oh, really wow. good. Yeah. So like if I'm in one position... I can do fine. Even like wall sits and stuff. It's when I'm moving around. Gotcha. If yeah. I'm in one position, I can like focus on something and sing some songs. Right. And, like think of a Brooklyn Nine-Nine episode. But <laughs> yeah, other than that, I'm a goner. Um, the closest thing we got to Big Brother Uncut, just while we're on challenges still, was that you running out of the shower when you got your name called on the <laughs> screen to run out for that ball. Yeah. Oh my gosh. And the thing is, they didn't even show it. But he called me out three times, not two, oh, right. three times. Yeah, he was right. screwing with me, that man. <laughs> <laughs> it was literally the day before that uh, episode, I saw an article being like, this is like family friendly. It's not like the old uncut. The next episode, you have to run out there while you're having a shower. I know. And do you know how many <laughs> Daily Mail articles came out oh over me? Oh my God, Daily Mail. Like, oh. it was ridiculous. And I still even have people today, like literally send me Instagram DMs, like creepy guys. Oh no! Their TV, yeah. Yeah, like, thank and, thank God you weren't on the original series. Thank yeah, God. Yeah. Oh my God! And even like I'm a very conservative person. Like <laughs> I knew going into the house because I was the youngest. I really wanted to. I knew I would have acquired a younger audience, so I never wore anything pro provocative. I never wore, you know, like I was very much PG, and I was one of the only people that never showered naked. I don't always shower in a bikini. And I think Big Brother used that to his advantage. Ah, uh, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> right. But, um, yeah. is that, did your mum see that episode and say, I fucking told you this was a bad idea? Oh, I no, she was <laughs> herself laughing. She's like, you were holding them down like no tomorrow. I'm like, you yeah, killed it. shit. Like, <laughs> you knew what you were doing. Poor jeans. Like, <laughs> you did this to me, mum. <laughs> but no, mum was loving it. She's, yeah. <laughs> oh, it was hilarious. It was a great, it was a great scene. <laughs> Um, you mentioned before about the challenges and you talked about how like they were so physical or strenuous. Were you expecting more challenges like Big Brother US where there's some like puzzles and quizzes? Yeah, I was I was even expecting like um even old Big Brother Australia challenges, you know, like the silly ones where yep. they would like run around in like dinosaur suits and stuff. Yeah. I was expecting <laughs> stuff like that. So then when I when I went there and within the first week where we were already done like three physical challenges in a row, I'm like, oh my god, like maybe I should have worked out before coming here like <laughs> I wanted I didn't know what I was getting myself into because I wanted Kieran to win a comp because I thought it'd be so crazy to see who we would nominate yeah. but then it's like eventually I'm like he's never winning anything yeah he was always the first to drop <laughs> <laughs> and the thing is when he would drop in a challenge he would always like blame it on other things he'd oh, be like no. oh I got a cramp like Kieran you don't have a cramp or he'll be like Oh, I slipped. I'm like, no, you didn't slip, Kieran. <laughs> like, I'm not a physical person at all. I would just accept. I'd be like, hey, guys, I'm just not very good at this. Like, see ya. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> Don't nominate me. <laughs> Peace out. Yeah. Um, no, he gave it his best crack. Like, he did pretty well in some of those challenges. So. Yeah, but, like, some of them you were, like, clearly, like, stacked against him in terms of, like, once again, we talk, we spoke about, like, people who were so physical and, like, Kieran isn't and that's like fine neither am I so I'm not like shading yeah, but it's yeah. like it's like yeah it's like sometimes you would walk in probably seeing a challenge be like I am not gonna win this yeah yeah well because that's the thing like it's also very coincidental that like because we didn't go into the house knowing that it would be very physical and when I saw everyone and how di diverse everyone was I thought wow great like this is gonna be I wonder what the challenges are gonna be but isn't it very coincidental that the challenges were very physical and the top three were the most physical people that entered the house? Yeah. I thought that's crazy, but it shows that if you're going on Big Brother yeah. next year, like do some workouts before you go in. Like they're, they're tough. <laughs> Either that or the producers can mix up the comps. Oh, uh, true. Yeah, good point. Maybe maybe do some puzzles. You know, I'm not, I'm not too bad at puzzles. <laughs> yeah, no, because you were doing well in the, it was like the final five. I think it was the puzzle with your faces. You, yeah, Sophie... I yeah, I got closer than that than what they showed. And it was actually between Dan and me. I was mm -hmm. actually pretty close. And then they made it out as though it was like Dan versus Sophie. But um, yeah, I liked I like puzzles. Yeah, um, more of that next year, please. Speaking yeah. of speaking of puzzles, what are you doing in lockdown to keep yourself entertained? And what is the first thing you're going to be doing when you get out of lockdown? 
I mean, uh, we have been playing a lot of Call of Duty and Monopoly. Oh, I just, right, cool. I just beat Nathan in yet another game of Monopoly. I'm I'm a gun at it at this point. So, <laughs> yeah. And I'm really excited to just, like, drive to the beach and oh, even yeah. just have, like, fish and chips on the beach. Because I, I live about an hour away from the closest beach. So, yeah. I can't, like, sneakily drive there. But, yeah, I just want to go for a bit of a road trip, maybe, like, you know, rent a, rent a house down somewhere for a couple of days, gets, gets drunk a bit, who knows? <laughs> oh, yes, please. Yes, please. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Should we, I guess we're going to, I think we're going to wrap it up on that. Everyone chuck your, <laughs> everyone chuck your masks on. I'm not putting my mask on. No, I'm we're about to, no, on, it's, we're, mandatory. it's mandatory. It's $200. mandatory, $200. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, this is it. We'll hang, we'll hang around afterwards after we wrap it up for yeah. a sec, but, uh, yeah, this is it. We're going to re-enter the, the real world now, so we're masked up. Hope everyone's doing well. Uh, Sarah, thank you so much for joining us on the that's podcast. That's what I was going to say. That's what I was going to say. Uh, is there anything you want to plug? Is there anything you want to sh- give a shout out to? An Instagram or a Twitter? Or your YouTube. I've been mean, watching your YouTube. My Instagram? Yeah, my Instagram. Just type up Sarah McDougal. Or my YouTube as well, yeah. I've been mm-hmm. making some videos. So yeah, YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, awesome. Uh, and for anyone watching this as well, we've got more uh, interviews, podcasts coming with more house guests. So keep an eye on our socials and you'll see us chatting with more people. But Sarah, thank you so much for giving us some time. No, thanks, guys. <laughs>